earth. He's laying on the earth. And your descendants are going to be so great. They're going to be like the dust of the earth. And we're seeing that right now because we're the descendants. If you've asked Christ to come inside your life, you're a descendant of Jacob. Now watch this. Because you got to understand, there's a, there's a contract being written here that you're attached to. I want you to get that. You are attached to this contract if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are attached to this contract that's being written, this promise that the Lord God above the heavens... Angels descending and ascending is speaking to Jacob, your forefather. I'm going to give you that land. That means that land that he's laying on belongs to you and to you and to you. And what's that land that he's laying on? The earth. I want you to think about that just for a moment. You are a descendant of Jacob if you've asked Christ to come inside your life. You're now attached to this word that you are a descendant of Jacob. And that land God gave to Jacob and his descendants. <laughs> this planet has been given to the children and the descendants of Jacob in which if I am saved and I have Christ in me, I am attached by adoption to this word. I am attached to this word. And your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed. See, some people say, well, I'm really not attached by blood. This is why he said God wants to make sure. God doesn't make any mistakes with his word. And this is why he said in his word, in you, your blood, and in your seed. Your word. Well, wait a minute now. In you, your blood, and in your seed, your word. The Bible says the seed, the sower goes and sows. Right? He sows his seed. Then the word declares the seed is the word. This is why I... Because the word says, if I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, I am now a descendant of Jacob. That attaches us in you, your blood, and in your seed, the word, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Hear what I'm saying. If you have asked Christ to come inside your life, you are attached now as a descendant into Jacob and father above the heavens, above the ladder, the angels of God ascending and descending, blessing the planet. All of his, all of his seed and his word, those that are attached, receive that. But the word that proceeds from us in your seed, all the families. In your seed, in your word, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I'm taking my time on this because I'm setting a pace here. For what I'm about to release on you, you may never have heard. If you have asked Christ to come inside your life, you are attached to the anointing that has been given to Jacob, the promise that the earth belongs to you. But also, all the families of the earth shall be blessed too. Why? 
because of you. If you have Christ inside you, you're attached to this covenant that now those families of the earth that have yet to ask Christ to come inside them will be blessed by you. Oh, come on now. This is the way the kingdom works. My neighbors that I have yet to know shall be blessed because of me. Whether they're saved or not. If they're saved, then this covenant comes to them. But if they're not saved, guess what? The blessings of God can come on them because of me. That's what that word is saying. You need to recognize who you are. Who are you? I am a son of God. I am a descendant of Jacob. I am a child of the Most High. Come on, say it with me. I am a son of God. I am a descendant of Jacob, a child of the Most High. Come on, recognize who you are. Get your authority down. We have to recognize we are not mere men. We are children of the Most High God. And I receive all the power that comes as a child of God. <laughs> Why? Because I'm part of the family of God. If I'm attached and a descendant, that means I'm family. I'm family of God. I'm family of Jacob. I'm family of God. The best place anybody on this planet can be is next to a child of the Most High God. When you go to the grocery store and you're walking down, up and down those lanes, you're a child of the Most High God, buying a loaf of bread and a container of milk and a stick of butter. <laughs> you're a child of the Most High God. And those people who are buying the alcohol and cigarettes are blessed because of you. Oh, but pastor, why should they be blessed? Look at them. Don't judge that. The only reason why they're doing that is because you have yet to tell them the authority that they can step into. Oh, come on now. I told you I'm going to drop something heavy on you. You got these people that are wrestling with all these issues. They're all around you. And what are you doing? Are you just pointing the finger? Nah, 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 nah. Or are you loving on them? You don't even have to tell them, oh, you better not buy that cigarette. You better not buy that liquor. What if you go over there and just grab, hey, can I help you with another one of those cases? <laughs> and then they'll want to know, who are you? What do you mean? I, I sat by, I was stood behind a, a guy at one of the convenience stores. This guy was so short-tempered. Big guy up in North Texas. I'm in just a cowboy of cowboys. And you know, he's one of those cowboys that, you know, he had a, you know, they would, they would use dip, right? And so he had the skull ring on his back pocket. You know what I'm talking about. And he had that dip so much in, and it was already ripping through his pants. And there wasn't one in there and he's telling the lady behind the, the register, said, uh, he said, yeah, I want one, one of those skulls, the one over there with the, whatever he was saying. I don't know nothing about all that stuff. He's, but all I know is that when he said it, he said it by name and I saw it. And she couldn't see it. And he was saying by name, but she thought it was talking about a time. She didn't know anything about any of that stuff. And she kept bypassing it. And that guy was getting madder. And, man, I just want to jump over this counter. I just go get it myself. But you know he was having a caffeine fit. Or a, not caffeine. What is that? Nicotine. See, that's how dumb I am when it comes to that stuff. He was having a nicotine fit. That's me. If you don't get me my coffee, I got a caffeine. <laughs> He was having a nicotine. Ma'am, I'm telling you, you know, it's right there. It's right next one over. And she like bypassed two more. And I said, I said, hey, sweetheart, it's the green one. Because it had a color. It was the only one. That, when I said the green, because I knew she was like me, just as dumb. But I, was, I read it. She wasn't reading it. And she was kind of a bit in a panic. And I knew that she was concerned because this guy was getting hot. And he's a big guy. And I said, ma'am, is that green one right there? 
And she goes, oh. And he goes over, he says, thank you, sir. And then on his way out, he said, he goes, he goes, do you, do you like this brand too? And I said, I don't know anything about that stuff. And he just, he just kind of looked at me, he goes, I don't know who you are. And I said, I'm a preacher. And that's what I told him. I'm a, he goes, you're a preacher? You're a pastor? You told me about this? And I, he just kept walking. I know I got in that guy's head. Come on now. That man's blessed because the child of the living God walked in there. And now I'm stuck inside his DNA. And I believe one day I'm going to be changing the channel. And there'll be some cowboy talking about how one day I was over there trying to buy some. And I was so impatient. And a preacher. <laughs> and I couldn't get him out of my head. And my mama had been telling me I need to go to church. And I finally decided I don't go to church. See, I just sowed a seed in his head. See how that works. As the Bible says, one man plants the seed, another person comes and waters it, but it's God, the one that sits above this ladder, that gives us the increase. Are you seeing this? <laughs> Hallelujah. So he says, in your seed, in your family, the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will never, I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken. See, Jacob's dead. But God is still fulfilling his word. And he will not stop till it is done. Till all the families of the earth are blessed. Are you seeing the power that you have now as a child of the living God? Are you getting this? All right, let's begin. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3 verse 18. Told you I'm going to take you down a journey. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. Watch this. A lot of people have that, take issue with this scripture, but hang in, we're talking about family. Wives, submit to your own husbands as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, which means employee. Do not provoke your, oh, excuse me. Obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as man pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. He's giving wives, husbands, children, Fathers, employees, directives. There's nobody else. Gives you directives. Look, this is what you're going to do. It's very simple. You want to live in a family? Very simple. Just do these things. Submit to your own husband as fitting on the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter unto them. Children, obey your, your parents in all things for this is well pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, employees, obey in all things your masters or your employer. According to the flesh, not with eye service as man pleasers, but in the sincerity of heart, fear in God. Every one of these things are referring to you to do your best in that position, but do it as unto the Lord, not unto the person. When you are part of the family of God, you have to do things according to the authority of that family. And if you do according to the authority of that family, then the blessings of the family will fall upon you. Now, I'm connected to the family of God by salvation of Jesus Christ. But if I disobey his word, I don't get the blessings. Because how dare I expect to receive the principles of God if I refuse the directives of God? What makes me be in an authority of the family of God? What am I missing? The word says give and it will be given unto you. How simple is that? If I don't give, it will not be given unto me. It says love your neighbors as yourself. And if I don't love my neighbor, then I don't love myself. Are you seeing this? You know, there's an equal and opposite reaction to every action. If I love, I love myself. If I don't love my neighbor, I don't love myself. 
I have no rights to love myself if I don't love my neighbor. That's what the word is basically saying. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Just take care of people around you. You do it as unto the Lord. So if I disobey the word of God, then how dare I expect to receive the blessings of God? Are you seeing that? I say it like this. If my children disobey my word, how dare you think you're going to get the blessings of driving that car I just bought you? Are you hearing me now? You see how this works? Uh -huh. Mister, if you don't take care of your bride, how dare you expect you to get a great meal? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You better take, think twice about what's in that meal. Notice how the women laugh real loud about that one, mister. Pay attention. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm putting salt in this thing. He got me mad. Get that. Ain't no pepper today. I put it on my portion, but not his portion. You get that. And you think, uh, and then you better not complain about how bad that thing. You better say it's good. She knows. <laughs> That's the way the word of God works. That's what it's saying right here. But then watch, he goes on and says, whatever you do, do it heartedly, wholeheartedly, as to the Lord and not to men. Everything you do, you need to do it as the, as the God, our Heavenly Father, above the ladder. Are you seeing that? You don't do it for the man laying on the earth. You don't do it for the angels ascending and descending. You don't do it for the ladder. You don't do it for the earth. You do it for the God Most High that's up above the ladder. The one who sends the blessings to you. That means everything you do. When you're working, do it as unto the Lord. You're living, do it as unto the Lord. You're a husband, a wife, a child, an employer, employee, do it as unto the Lord. You take problems, you have issues with them, do it as unto the Lord. Whoever that authority is, do it as unto the Lord. You don't have to do it as unto them, do it as unto the Lord. And watch how the Lord will bless you. Because it goes on to say, and knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. Wow. For you serve the Lord, the Lord Christ, but he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done. And there is no partiality. See, it's a good thing to read about all the blessings of God, but nobody likes to hear the bad part of it. It's all the same coin. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Then it says choose life. But some people choosing death. Wages of sin is death. Choose life. Stay away from sin. And if you sin, ask him to forgive you. Get it over with. Done. Like that. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry I did that. I'm so sorry. Father, forgive me. Be repentant. Watch Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Watch this. Romans chapter 17. It says, repay no one evil for evil. Huh. Yeah, he mistreated you? Go ahead and put that salt in that meal. Come on now. Just doing it as unto the Lord. You didn't know I was going to go there, did you? Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible as much as as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. We need to learn to walk in a peaceable life because you're going to have challenges every day of your life. You're going to have people telling you this and you want that. Figure out how to live in peace. The Lord wants you to have peace. Everything that you do, the Lord wants you to have peace. Argument with the spouses, figure out how to find peace. Problems with your children, figure out how to find peace. Children, problems with your parents, figure out how to find peace. And you're going to do it as unto the Lord. And the Lord's going to give you the answer to that solution. But you have to do it in peace. Do not lose your peace. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. Watch this. Verse 20 and 21. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. Oh my God, that's just... That just says it all. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he does not love his brother 
Watch. For he does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God who he has not seen? Uh, am I your brother? Hey, Russ. Am I your brother? Hey, Juan. Am I your brother? Am I your brother, Sarah? Am I your brother? Am I your brother? Am I your brother? Uh, am I your brother? Am I your brother? Am I your brother? You see me. Now, do you love me? I just needed to hear that thing. Watch this. For he who does not love his brother whom he sees, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this command we have from him, that he who loves God must, it's a command, must love his brother also. Hmm. Do you love me? I love you. I love you. Oh, my broadcast every single day. What do you see me do on my broadcast? That's sign language for I love you. That's not hook them horns. That's not no football. No devil sign. This is sign, actual sign language. For I love you. I've been doing this. My, my wife and I are married. I go like that to my wife. My children are born. Send them off to school. I go like that. I'm just, in my family, that is a thing. That is my family's thing. Now my children, my oldest is 32, my youngest is 23, and when we say goodbye to each other, we hug and kiss each other, and when they're driving off, both of them, they give me the sign, I give them the, that is my, it's just like, it's just a, now it's just a habit, and I give it to everybody, and every one of my broadcasts, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love, I love you, I love, so to me, this means, oh, this is a warm embrace, a kiss on the cheek, a hug, no matter what, no matter what you do to me, I love you. Why? Because I love God and I ain't no liar. I love you. I, but I really love you. It's not a makeup. It's not like this guy's getting under my skin. I don't love him, but I got to make myself love him. There's nothing like that. I, I'm telling you, when you start living this kind of life with this, this word, you're my brother. Why? Because I am attached to Jacob because I don't want to miss out the blessings that my God is going to send me. So I am attached to loving you. And you come and irritate me, it don't matter because now this guy has a love walk down. I love people. I love people. And they do me wrong or whatever, I still love them. Why? Because they don't know. Well, I'm going to love them till they get to know. What do they know? What do they not know? They don't know that they're about to get the blessings of God. Why? Because I'm part of the family of God. So it don't matter what you do to me. I love you because the condition of you being blessed is that I love you. Not you love me. Is that I love you. It doesn't run around. Nowhere in the scripture have I found that it, run, that it tells you run around and figure out how to get people to love you. I haven't read a scripture that says run around and get people to love you. But it does tell me to run around. I love my brother. And there's no condition. It says right there, there's no partiality. You ready for this scripture? Proverbs 17, 17. I'm going to wrap it up with this one. All right now. Watch what it says right here. A friend loves at all times. But a brother is born for adversity. Oh. <laughs> All right now. Pastor said this thing, and I don't know if I like what he said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You love me? <laughs> oh, you don't know what my husband did to me. Oh, do you do you do you love me? Do you love God? A brother is born. What's that word? What's that next word? What's that? For? 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 What does the word for denote? Purpose. A brother is born with a purpose for adversity. I'm your brother. I said that. We established that, right? 
Russ, you're my brother. Yeah, poor adversity. To some people that I love you, I love you till the going gets tough. Huh? Then the tough get going. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, so the question now is, did you really love me? See, that's the challenge that we have, that the world wrestles with. Are you really part of the family? If you're really part of the family, when trials happen, when, the, when adversity happens, you get closer because that's why you're my brother. That's why I'm your brother. I'm here so when things get bad with you, call on me and we're gonna figure it out. I have the answerer in me and he sits on top of the ladder, blessing me with whatever it is that you may need. What do you need? I'm your brother that is here for adversity. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't know about some church members with other church members, but your pastor is here and family is here and leadership is here to stick with you no matter what. And no matter how many times you rub people wrong, we're gonna love you through it all. And we're gonna teach you because we need your help. Because this world is blessed, contingent to you. And I don't wanna hurt the world. Are you seeing how powerful it is to be part of the family of God? You see how powerful it is for us to be in a family? I love you. I love you. Ladies, where are the nurses? I just want to bless you. You see these, you see these, like, give God praise, why don't you? See these young ladies right here? These are, these are nurses that travel to this region to help us out. I honor you. And, we're, and I want to pray a blessing over you. Uh, I came driving up on Thursday in a blue truck. I don't know if y'all were one of the ladies that I honked at. Was it you? I came by and I saw these ladies walking, you know, doing their speed walking and everything. I felt a little convicted. I'm a little fat. I need to get out there with them and run. And I, saw, I saw them walking. And, and I come driving up in my, in my truck, my wife and I. And, were you with me? Yeah. So I come up and I roll my window down and I start blessing them. God bless you in Jesus' name. Look, thank you. Can you pray for us? And they started prophesying. They started prophesying over the building. That the Lord be with you and descend upon you, right? Was that you that did that? She did that. Have we ever met before? Do I even know your name? But I love you. Are you seeing that? I have a family member. Where are you from, man? California. I got a family member in California. You ready for this? Because I, the way she blessed me, I was so blessed. I'm still blessed to this day. I tell everybody about it. Didn't I tell you about it? I told you all about it, right? I told everybody. I said, man, well, I got blessed. I got blessed. I got a family member in California. Now, if I'm ever in California and I got a problem, and somehow she finds out that I have a problem, would you help me or not help me? She helped me. Why? Because she does it all to Jesus. It had nothing to do with me. And that's the way we need to love. Are you seeing that? Because estamos familia. We're family. Part of the family of God. 